Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a new video. I just got out of bed, I was reading my comments on my YouTube channel and then I saw somebody posting an Intel document that just got released I think either today or yesterday where they were using my Ryzen 3000 boost survey slides inside a marketing slide. Do you remember that I told you in the Intel versus AMD topic that Intel doesn't have a marketing? I was really wrong because Intel clearly has a marketing and it's absolutely terrible. We will just go over those slides in a bit. Before we will go over those slides, I want to make um, some updates to the rise and boost or just some additional comments to the boost survey. There was a comment from Yuri, not sure what, if that's his real name or I don't know, but he's also or claiming to work for AMD, I'm not sure what exactly his relation is, but he kept posting um, on Twitter and uh, on overclock.net and also on my YouTube videos that everything we're doing um, has nothing to do with what AMD is doing. Like AMD started two months ago working on this software update to fix the boost problem. That's what he's saying. Um, and that it has nothing to do with like the boost survey or any other video that was published by other tech, tech YouTubers, for example. That really doesn't make sense. That really does not make sense. AMD kept denying that over the last two months. Why would they keep denying that the problem exists if they're working already on a fix? That doesn't really make much sense. Also, one thing I would like to address is that I'm not the only one who's making videos about this boost topic. Obviously, everything just exploded last week when we did like this public survey, but um, like Gamers Nexus was doing a lot of videos about this topic previously. They were uh, for example, testing the cold scale with uh, the Ryzen 3000 under LN2. They were also doing like updating testing on a GISA 1002 versus 1003 A and ABB. So they were also doing a lot of testing. I'm not the only guy who's doing testing about this topic because some people might get this impression, but that's wrong. There are plenty of other YouTubers and media out there who are also testing this and who are also, um, who, who should also get credit um, for this whole thing. That's something I would like to address. But let's take a look at this brilliant Intel slide. I think it was released for IFA, which is an exhibition next week or starting at the weekend here in Berlin. We have this Intel real world performance slide. It starts with where it all begins, the six pillars, process, architecture, memory, interconnect, software and security. Putting security in here is kind of hilarious considering the whole meltdown and spectra thing, so we'll just, yeah, no comment to that. The other stuff is just typical marketing, blah, blah, there's nothing really we can talk about. Desktop leadership, desktop leadership. Now it's getting interesting. Obviously they're marketing the new i9-9900KS, so all core 5 gigahertz CPU. Totally fine with that if they're addressing this as world's best gaming processor. Probably it is. It's like a 9900K um, clock to 5 gigahertz or manually across all cores. Should probably be the best in gaming. That's nothing I would argue with. Now it's getting more interesting because Intel is pulling the I'm a 15 year old high school girl fighting versus another high school girl called AMD and we're doing just random slides and bashing each other in marketing slides. It's, yeah, I think it's starting off with the Guru 3D news. I already told you about this in my Ryzen 3000 boost survey that Shamino, who's working at Asus, did a statement on overclock.net, but not as an Asus employee. He was doing it as his personal opinion why he thinks that the boost doesn't work, mainly because he thinks that AMD would limit it due to longevity. And for Intel taking like a personal opinion of somebody, even though if he's like a highly skilled uh, engineer working at ASUS, using a personal opinion of somebody and quoting it in an official Intel document, I mean, he, they could just quote any one of us and giving our personal opinion. That's, uh, yeah. There's not, not much I would say about this. And um, then we have a benchmark slide next to it, which is kind of okay. You can do that if you want to. You can always pick the benchmark that's most beneficial for your product and put it in a slide. That's kind of okay to me. Then we have my slides. It's nothing I knew about. It's not like Intel would ask me to use those slides. As long as they use it in the correct context, fine to me. And from what I can see, that's fine. Then empowering creators. 
that's one of those typical marketing slides where they're using relative performance so nobody has any clue what's exactly going on then we have intel cascade lake x which is the upcoming intel cascade lake x cpu compared with intel sky lake x it's not stated which cpu exactly versus an exactly stated amd cpu so 2990 wx 32 core thread ripper then the other thread rippers as well but for example for intel sky lake x is it 7800x or is it 7920x we have no idea same goes for cascade lake and then doing those like relative performance claims without giving real information which benchmark was used which cpu under which condition is it again a cascade lake x at 5 gigahertz with a chiller we don't know so that's yeah really highly questionable then real world not really 82 percent showing cinebench R20 with an 8700K with a score of like 3800. What what do you want to tell us with this? Like what's the 82%? I don't know. Is this a figure that AMD was claiming in the past and I maybe missed that? I have no idea. There was no additional information to this. Real world, not really. 0.22% showing some Cinema 4D stuff in the background so it's probably related to right, professional creators and keep in mind that we're still talking about desktop. This part is still part of the desktop presentation of the slide. Now real world, not really again. Users in the segment do office application, media consumption, games, Steam, CSGO, LOL, light content creation, Photoshop, Illustrator. Wait, what? And then the source is Intel Product Improvement Program. I had no idea what Intel Product Improvement Program is. So let's simply take a look at this. Here we have the Intel Software Improvement Program, which I found out is a software you can install on your device and give Intel feedback what kind of programs you're using. And Intel is saying, what will Intel do with the information that's collected? The information collected will be used to better understand how consumers use Intel software and how to improve our software in the future. Okay. This is an automated program that requires minimal effort to participate. Customers simply choose to participate, granting Intel permission to collect data. Okay, okay, going back to the slide. This means that Intel is using their software to collect data to further improve compatibility or performance of their hardware used with consumer products. That's fine to me. Obviously, that's fine. But if we take a look at the source, in the end, it says 10 million systems, all notebook and two in one. So the data this is based on is all notebooks and two in one. But we're still in the desktop slide of the thing. And they're comparing this with like Threadripper and Cascade Lake X and then saying only 0.22% are creators. That's what's listed here on the bottom, like rank. 1331 Cinema 4D, 0.22%. Really, I mean, notebooks and two-in-ones. Who in the world, if you're a professional creator using Cinema 4D, would do that on a tablet? This makes no sense whatsoever. You cannot compare like tablet and notebook data with like professional creators and uh, like Threadripper and Cascade Lake X users. Obviously somebody who's using a tablet or a notebook is using Chrome, Word, Media Player, Excel, WinRAR. That's all fine. But you cannot just compare like desktop versus notebooks and tablets. It's a completely different use case. Even comparing desktop to like professional stuff like Cinema 4D and using 32 core CPUs is not correct. That's still a different amount of people, like different user bases. It's completely wrong to take this out of context. Especially keep in mind, if you're a professional creator, if you're an enthusiast like us, would you ever install a, like a tool like the Intel Product Improvement Program, the software on your device and give Intel feedback? I personally never did that. I would never do that. I would never install such tools. Those are tools I immediately uncheck and not install them in the first place. And I think you would also do exactly the same. So the data they have, like the popularity of the different applications, it's like so far from reality from what desktop users are using. And to compare this with 
like Ryzen Threadripper or like Cascade Lake X is so far out of context, it's really embarrassing to put this in a slide. In the end, trying to tell people that they cannot compare a Core i7 with a Ryzen 7, it's more like a Core i3 versus a Ryzen 7 and a Core i5 versus a Ryzen 7, but I mean, it's just, there's like no data to it. Typical marketing slide, but this part where they're taking notebook data and compare it with like professional applications, streaming, rendering work, it's yeah, brilliant, brilliant work. And uh, thanks for having me in there in this slide. It's, uh, I would not like to be in there, but nobody asked. Okay, so much about this video. Um, let me know what you think about this brilliant slide. See you soon.